Hello, everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to find out the top N employees. So the use case would be that we have a list of employees and we would like to know the top 10 in terms of the CTC payout. Now, one option obviously would be to sort the data, but then we don't want to do that. A, because it is a repetitive manual task and B, because it will unnecessarily change the layout of the data. So what we want to do here is to first do a sort by, and we would like to sort both the columns, and we would want to sort it by column C, and the order would be minus one, which is descending. So you can clearly see that it has done our job for us. We can see all the employees in a descending order. What we would want to do next is to only look at the top 10. So I will keep a control cell here. I will simply write top 10 here. And what I would like to do is to first show you how it works in a different cell and then we will merge the formulas. So we want to do an index of the entire array and we want to keep the row number as one. Now you notice this doesn't work, but if I say one and one, then it essentially tells me the first row and the first column. Now, if I say two, it gives me the first row and the second column. If I put this inside a curly bracket, then it's going to give me Scott Williamson and 40. And instead of writing the first row, if I write one, two, three, it doesn't work. But if I change it into a semicolon, then it works. Now, it's a little hard to explain in the purpose of what we are doing uh, in a short period of time, but I'll try my best. The way arrays work in Excel is that if I want to write A, B, and then one and two, we can write equal to, and in curly bracket, we will write A, and then to go to the next column, we put in a comma one and a semicolon, it gives us B in the second row, and then we write comma two. And this is what we're able to create. So I'm not explaining this in a lot of detail. You can learn it from the dynamic arrays course, but I hope you get the idea that a comma will break it into a different column and a semicolon breaks it into a different row. That's what we're doing here. We are taking the first three rows and the first two columns. The only thing left is for us to make it dynamic. So rather than writing one, two, and three, we want to create a sequence of 10 numbers, which is one comma, two comma, three comma, four, or rather one semicolon, two semicolon, three semicolon, four. And the result is like this. So as you can see, it works perfectly. When I change this to top one or two or three or four or five, the results change. Now let's just combine this with the original formula. So we want to do an index. Then we want to do a sequence of L1. And then we want to take one comma two, which means both the columns. And as you can see, we have created a dynamic top N list. To improve on the user experience, you can create a dropdown in the cell. So rather than writing five, I can go to data, data validation, one more time data validation, and I can enter any value or I can change it to a list in which, for example, I give all the numbers from one to 10. So that would be a slightly better way of creating a better user experience. But I'll show you something different. First, I will enable the developer tab. For this, we go to file, options, Customize ribbon and then select the developer tab. Once you have done that, 
Now on the developer tab, we can go to insert and I want to select a spin button. Simply drag and draw it like this. And then we right click, format control, and we will enter a current value of one till 15. The maximum value is actually this will be one and this will be 15. Increment is one and the cell link is let's say L5. Let me change the color here. And let's update the formula and let's connect it not to L2, but to L5. Okay, as you can see, now I can change the form control and the list gets updated. It looks very clean, creates a beautiful user experience.